And do you still pinch yourself when you play against someone like LeBron? No, I've adjusted. I'm, I'm a bit myself now. Um, but just LeBron, I've been watching him for so young, like from just a little kid, and I used to wear his jerseys and, and all that. And he was my favorite, one of my favorite players growing up. And I was getting to play him in the playoffs in the seven game series was, was really cool. It's over! It's over! Denver makes history! The Nuggets are going to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history! Yeah, I mean, we just want to make the most opportunity um, for us Nuggets team to do that. You know, we want to go all the way and stay locked in. I think, you know, our chemistry is at an all-time high. The way we play, the way we read the game without, without even speaking. So, we, we got four more wins to go. Let's go, Rush! What's up, guys? My name is Rush. The Denver Nuggets have officially made it to the NBA Finals. So today, we're going to celebrate with a Jamal Murray interview that I did a few months ago here in Melbourne, Australia. We had a great chat. Jamal is a super easygoing guy, so I feel you're going to really enjoy this episode as we covered a wide range of topics, such as playing against LeBron James, how he handles pressure, and his interactions with Kobe Bryant. I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, I'm gonna show you another photo and I want you to tell me uh, what this player means to you. Kobe? Yeah, Kobe, my dad used to love Kobe. Whenever Kobe was on, my dad would call me over and we'd you know, watch his games or whatever and my dad would just talk about you know, um, how passionate he is and how much he cares about it and all that and try to uh, rub that off on me. So Kobe goes way back for me and my pops. And did you ever get the chance to talk with Kobe? Yeah, I went to his uh, Mamba Academy in, um, in LA one year and you know, learned a lot, taught to him about you know, just hoops and different tricks and stuff and um, helped, helped all of us out at the camp, honestly. And some people have compared you to Kobe, saying that you've got the same killer instinct. How do you feel when you hear that comparison? I agree. I agree. I think we both have the same confidence and we both have the same uh, belief in our work, you know, so the work that he puts in, you know, he doesn't doubt it. He doesn't go in the game feeling scared about what he's got, you know, so that's the same with me. I put so much work. Um, in my game that I, I should be confident when I step on the court, you know? So, I think that we carry the same kind of attributes. Now the shot clock at two, the mismatch on eight. Oh, oh, no, he did And do you still pinch yourself when you play against someone like LeBron? No, I've adjusted. I'm I'm a bit myself now, um, but just LeBron, I've been watching him for so young, like from just a little kid, and I used to wear his jerseys and, and all that, and he was my favorite, one of my favorite players growing up. And I was getting to play him in the playoffs in the seven-game series was, was really cool. For LeBron James, who's attacking. And Murray's going to reset. Now fires away another three. It's over! It's over! Denver makes history! The Nuggets are going to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history! What sacrifices have you made to become an NBA player? I mean, everybody knows everything about me, you know? <laughs> um, I see just the time, dedication, the, the amount of you know, mental preparation it is for every game, uh, the amount of stress you deal with, uh, people talking about you. You know, I think there's so much that goes into it. Um, your own mental health from dealing with that, you know, we're just, as humans, we're not built for that kind of, that amount of thoughts, you know, to go through your head throughout the, throughout the day. So I think that's probably the hardest thing is just being you while you're, someone else to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's, that's how I see it, so I can, the best thing I can do is kind of just mix both worlds and just be as chill and laid back as I can and just kind of uh, take the good with the bad, but other than that, I, I, I love the, the life I'm in, I love the life I live, and, and I've worked for it all my life, so I have no reason to complain. So you're, you take a lot of big shots. When the clock's ticking, you're in the fourth quarter, and it's coming down to those final moments, how do you handle the pressure? Just embrace it. Uh, that's, those are the moments you, you, you live for, uh, you dream for. You know, I, it keeps me, up, keeps me up more at night if I don't, if I don't shoot it, you know, because then I think of what could have been. Um, I'd rather be there taking the shot, and I think everybody knows that now. So, um, like I said, that's something you dream for and dream, dream to experience as a kid. And, uh, you know, once you get that feeling, you don't want to lose it. You want to do it again and again. So. I'm going to show you a moment from one of your games. You know which one this is? Was this something that you practice or is this like in the moment 360 layup? I mean, it's something you know how to do for me personally. You know, it's not the first time I've done that, but in the playoffs it was, you know, so it was just one of those reactions. I actually went up to dunk it thinking I was going to dunk it or with the intent to. And then uh, once I realized that, you know, he was too far in front of me, I just set myself up so I could get the angle. You know, he couldn't block the shot from that angle. If I went to his right side, I just kind of 
I just kind of calculated it and um, turned out being a crazy play, yeah. Now there's a lot of young kids that look up to you. For someone that's watching this, trying to achieve their dream, what advice would you give to them? Stay true to yourself. Like, you know, when I was coming from Canada, nobody really believed in the practice I was doing. You know, nobody really thought I could go to the NBA from being from Canada in a small town in Kitchener. So, you know, I just stayed true to myself and opportunities started presenting themselves and um, with the work, you know, obviously. So I just say keep working and, and keep believing in your dream because you can make your dream a reality. And that's a, that's a true thing, you know. One thing I'm curious to ask you about is, we know NBA players make a lot of money, but is it true you sleep on a, a blow-up mattress? And I saw in another interview you said that you don't actually own a car. No, I don't own a car. Still? Not, not in Denver, no. no not in Denver. I, um, I just drive rentals because I like to drive different cars. And I, I wanna, the car I'm going to buy or car I want to buy is going to be like a car I can't drive every day. So I'm not worried about having not everyday car. I just I go to the gym, I go back. If, I, if I'm going out, then I just you know, get a rider, get an Uber, get a driver. Um, but for the most part, I like to drive different cars and experience different cars, yeah. And you're a super humble, laid back fellow. What is happiness for you? Just peace, to be honest with you. Just be able to not have stress on your mind and um, can go about your day and not have stress. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. I'm doing what I love. Yeah, I have a little brother that I can teach and stuff, so it's not really what makes me happy. Just being on the court makes me happy, you know? So uh, not having anything that holds me back is, um, is always appreciative. Now we're gonna get onto a a more serious matter here. You're an incredible role model. If you tell me why it was so important to wear these shoes. It, in the bubble, it was just, you know, a lot of things going on and, and they kind of wanted us to not talk about matters or not you know, shine light on matters. And then, you know, the NBA, you know, gave us the opportunity to, to give us a platform to speak. And, you know, I just remember like thinking we were down 3-1 and or 2-1. And if we're gonna, you know, lose a series, I just wanna um, go down fighting and uh, go down uh, with the voice, you know, I just put those shoes on. I remember we lost 3-1. We lost the game, the first game I put them on, we lost. And, you know, I said, you know, I'm just gonna use these, use this situation as a symbol to me and as a strength to me to give me a reason why uh, I go on the court every day um, in that moment. Game after game, I kind of used the momentum and, and that momentum picked up for me. When I decided that I was gonna wear the shoes, that's when my energy changed, my focus changed, and the, the play followed after that, yeah. Say a young kid that's watching this and is experiencing racism, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to them? I'd just be the bigger person, uh, speak up about it. Um, you know, people get uncomfortable with, with, with the truth, but that's truly what heals. Just be the bigger person and just know that you're not alone. There's a lot of people that go through it in all, all different ethnicities and races and stuff. So you got to stay true to yourself and, and you're unique in your own kind. And toughest player to guard for you in the league? Well, Steph, yeah. Just because it's not like you, it's a different type of game when you're guarding him. You're, um, you're shooting shots that you don't think he's going to shoot. So it just puts you in a different place, you know? You're, you're trying to match that energy, match that, that rhythm. And what about the, the toughest city to play in? Denver's pretty hard to play in for a lot of teams because of the altitude. Yeah, I've um, heard about that. Utah as well. And Utah's court feels like it's coming down on you. It's like it goes, like, goes straight up. Well, every arena is more uh, open. All-time favorite kicks. These New Balances actually, they're not clean right now, but these are one of my favorites. Drake or J. Cole? I mean, that's a mood, you know? Depends on what mood I'm in. Um, J. Cole has probably been my favorite for the longest, but I mean, I listen to Drake probably more often. Eminem or Lil Wayne? Why are you giving me my two favorites? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Um, they're both tied. That's another thing. I probably, I probably lean to more, like every day, probably lean to more Eminem, but Lil Wayne is, when I grew up going to school, I'd listen to Lil Wayne a lot, yeah. Sure. All right, final question. What's been your most memorable moment in the NBA so far? Probably getting drafted. That's probably, I'll never forget that, you know. I, there's a lot of highlight plays and stuff like that, but getting drafted is something you never, you never forget, yeah.